Hello, everyone. We have come to interrupt your normal Friday night forum for a last minute change and shift. So tonight we're going to be tuning in to 1111 and talking about navigating the spiritual awakening phenomenon. So here comes the intro and then we'll go into some awesome content. I'm just sharing for everybody. It's so fun that um, we have some really good topics to talk about. I feel like this is actually meant to be tonight. I know that Candy Nicholson had a power outage, so I'm going to just share a little bit um, about this whole process. I think it's kind of meant to be, but um, I'm totally unprepared, but I am really excited to talk about this. So Matt, of course, was like so excited and his happy Friday ritual he does every Friday. He had shared with you guys this evening um, that Candy Nicholson will be sharing about modern shamanism. So she has a power outage and I tonight will be taking the place of Candy and we'll be talking about tuning in to 1111 and navigating spiritual awakening. I kind of feel like it's really, an, I mean, this is meant to happen. This is meant to be tonight because there are so many people who are having what we call a spiritual awakening. And it's something that is exciting for people. It can be overwhelming for people. And sometimes it can be downright scary for people. So tonight we're going to talk about signs and symptoms that you could be going to through a spiritual awakening and some interesting information on how to navigate that. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about numbers because as we'll talk about here in a little bit, when people are having a spiritual awakening, they start to be they start to notice a consistency in seeing the number 1111 or getting 1111 in change back or having it be just consistent in their life. And I'm going to share a little bit about just the basic numbers from zero to nine and 1111 as well and what those mean in numerology, um, just the, some of the basics. So if you are out there and you are watching and you have anyone that you know of, or you yourself are going through a spiritual awakening, or you already have gone through one in the past, and you are maybe having another one. It can happen multiple times throughout your life, so it's not just a once and done thing. Um, but just share with us if you are. I will be commenting. I'm sorry, I'm only checking the chat at the end, and I'll, I'll be open to some questions if you guys have some questions about it. But just apologize if you guys were really looking forward to listening to Candy tonight because I was so looking forward to seeing her. I haven't seen her in person for so long. And for those of you who come into New Visions Books and Gifts and do see her when she would be working on Sundays before the pandemic, probably have missed her lovely face and her beautiful energy. So we will have her back. I promise we will have her back on and do another Friday night forum um, with modern shamanism and talk about that. But again, tonight we're going to talk about 1111. So I should probably introduce myself if anyone has not seen me before or see me speak. I am Kara Loveheart. I'm an integrative intuitive medium. I work here at New Visions Books and Gifts, but I also am the owner of Firefly Hollow Holistic Wellness Center. And I practice um, private mediumship readings, body work, and, and uh, massage therapy there. So I'm a also a licensed massage therapist. But I also am the creator of a, mind, of a program that was called Mind Body Detox Program. And it's something that's really... My passion and purpose right now, it's my gift to the world of really helping people who are having spiritual awakenings, learning how to navigate the new world of energy sensitivity, things that happen um, that we will discuss a little bit tonight, um, how to navigate that process and how to up level a little bit when you're going through that. 
So first, let's talk about some of the signs that you might be going through a spiritual awakening. Now, I want to also caution before we go into the signs that a spiritual awakening can really borderline going through psychosis. I find it really important that we talk about that. A lot of a lot of individuals who are maybe on the spiritual path or who are engulfed in the spiritual community, a lot of times we do walk a fine line between going through our own mental health issues or breakdowns or even straight up a psychosis. And these are real things that do happen. So I highly recommend if you are having experiencing symptoms of a spiritual awakening that are really startling, there you're unable to have a, a proper work home life balance, um, being able to take care of yourself self, going through intense terror, anger, any emotional fluctuations that are really out of the norm. Again, please reach out. I think it's something we don't actually talk about and there's a stigma around it, but I'd want you to know that there is a fine line between that. And honestly, being a psychic medium, part of the, um, part of the process of being intuitive and waking up to your own spiritual or intuitive gifts is navigating how to differentiate reality and spiritual reality and symbols that are actually happening versus a psychosis. So if you've ever seen the, the movie number 23 with Jim Carrey, where he's finding numbers everywhere and he's really just going through a nervous breakdown. So there really is a fine line between that and um, a spiritual awakening. So the difference is um, in a spiritual awakening, you will start to have different signs or symptoms such as experiencing dreams that may be more vivid than usual, having synchronicities pop up all over the place. You may meet individuals that seem to have come along or were dropped into your lap at just the right time. And sometimes even during this time, so many people are having a spiritual awakening all at once with this collective spiritual awakening happening that certain people will meet other people that are also going through it. And then you feel this, there's a sense of magic. There's a sense of, for the first time sometimes, knowing through your own personal subjective experience that there seems to be a hand guiding you. There seems to be some sort of magical process. Someone is watching. Someone is dropping these things in. It's it's too coincidental, you say, because these things, these synchronicities t tend to happen consistently. It's not just once or twice or three times. It's consistently. So that's something that's really, really fascinating when that happens. Um, when you have a spiritual awakening, it's really your you're expanding your consciousness. You're expanding your sense of the world. And this really starts with number one. There's seven stages to this process. Um, and I'm going to go through them brief freely. This is, a, this is actually a forum we did years ago. Um, and it's so funny that we're doing it again. We did it back <laughs> right after um, the year 2011 when we were having a lot of that happening all over the world. And now we're 2021, 10 years later. And we're having another round. It's very interesting. So a spiritual awakening is really um, usually happens when people have a sudden shift in their life. It really comes down to the person you have identified yourself to be is no longer making sense with the reality inside of you and around you. This could happen when you lose a job. Maybe you identified yourself so strongly with the particular tasks you were doing at wherever you were working and the people you were working with. And now losing that job, a part of your identity is now taken from you. Who am I now? If you are a mother or father um, who has left children, gone off to college, and you're an empty nester, my whole identity or a big part of it was nurturing and taking care of my children. Who am I now? Maybe you have gone through a big shift in a health um, health crisis. You may be struggling with something um, either emotionally, physically, um, something sudden or something that's come on and it's really been in your life for you know a couple years now and you're really having to have let go of the old ways you used to operate, how much energy you had, how much maybe even income you're spending based on limitations with work. So that identity piece can change there. 
We have people who are leaving our lives. There's a lot of change and shift and growth happening in the world right now. And sometimes growth feels like loss. And now don't, don't take that as when we, you know, sometimes there absolutely is a natural grieving process that happens when we lose people, we lose loved, lose loved ones, we lose a job, we lose a partner, we end a relationship. But growth is usually the process of going through that transition. It happens from going through transition. And when we get to the other side of that, that's when we can really start to re-identify who we are as a new individual. So all these points are, I'm trying to think of any other examples. Um, one, another one that's really interesting and very common is once someone goes to, for their first time, if they've had their first um, experience with a, with an, with a a ghost. Say you went on a ghost hunting, you know, experience. It's, it's, you know, something you were like, I'm going to go on this ghost tour and you didn't believe in ghosts or spirits or anything like that. And all of a sudden you had your first experience with something that you thought was science fiction. And now your whole reality has shifted who you know yourself to be and how you think of the world has shifted. Um, everything going on with the pandemic is absolutely an identity point. Our normal, everyday way our rhythms and how we operate have changed and shifted so even 2020 was the big year i think of of really looking at the new things that we had to do or not we're not able to do anymore that we had to re-identify who we are so that is the first thing that happens that catalyzes a spiritual awakening is having your identity shaken to the core and after that happens, it's almost like your brain is trying to figure out who you are again. And it's really interesting because we have this deep voice within ourselves. We have our own intuition, our higher power. Everyone calls it something different. There is no one right way to say, this is what's really happening. It's God talking to you. It's angels. It's Jesus. It's the Buddha. It's those rocks. It's those trees. It's the fairies. It's the gnomes. All this stuff is our subjective experience of our own spirituality that we connect with based on our previous programs. God or spirit, the universe has to speak to us in a language or from a framework with which we understood it to, to come to us in the first place. And even people who are atheists and maybe very scientific, it may start to speak to them from a framework from which they can understand. So when you have this shift and your identity is falling away, who you are to become is unknown. And so you really are more open. You are more open to a new way of perceiving the world because the old rigid way of perceiving in the identity in which you were carrying is now stripping itself away. And that's when you're open to really seeing and perceiving the world from a deeper perspective. That's why children, because they don't have a strong identity point at the very beginning of their life, they're very open to spirit, open to the experience of angels or talking to grandmother who has passed away in their bedroom at night, or if they are experiencing something in the basement that's really creeping them out, you know, and they're, they're seeing that type of thing, or even just having a sense for an individual who might be a stranger, whether or not to trust them or not. Individuals who are not programmed yet, we're more open, we're more perceptive, and we're more um, neutral, if you shall say, to not having preconceived judgments, pre-programmed judgments, but more of a pre, um, sorry, we're not having preconceived judgments, but we're open to really having this sense of non-judgmental viewpoints that allows us to really see with a wider lens. Now, what happens when you see with a wider lens? This is where all the signs and symptoms come in. Synchronicities, seeing 1111, experiencing heightened sensitivities, experiencing even psychic experiences where all of a sudden your phone rings and you know who it is and you just knew and you pick it up and then you're baffled. Like, how did I know who that was? Um, text messages is a common thing. You may know that someone's upset with you or angry with you, or talking about you behind your back, maybe even, and not have any proof until later on. Um, you could also have um, just straight up experiences with spirit, spirits in, in general, whether it's um, 
earthbound spirits like ghosts, or you could be experiencing angels or Jesus or whatever your particular um, spiritual um, connection looks look like for you. So what happens, I think, during this phase of when we have the synchronicities, we see reoccurring numbers, and it may not be 1111, it may be you know, any number that really sticks out at you. You may keep seeing a specific animal that is jumping out at you and you're like, why do I keep seeing all these deer? Or that's really strange. I'm having these really close encounters with a specific species of animal out in nature or not even in nature. There's like could be flying into your window or falling on your car, things like that. But just the examples are louder than normal. They stick out to you. There's something about them that are significant, a subtle, significant shift in the way that these everyday happenings are presenting themselves to you. So you have a choice during that time. You have a choice when you're going through this shift to continue to hold on to every thread of who you thought you were to be and to try to rebuild yourself, this new identity point based off maybe a little a little snippet of who you are still and really start to anchor yourself back in. And that's when people start to ex- kind of reframe their world, reset it, but they're not necessarily moving deeper into a space with them themselves. They're not necessarily asking questions, going into this state of what I call metacognizance, where you're thinking about your own thoughts, you're becoming more self-aware, you're looking at why you think about things, having aha moments or realizations of why you have a pattern that keeps happening in your life. So all those things can continue to happen, but if you start to go the other way and you shift, you can choose not to continue on down the self-empowerment or self-directed rabbit hole, because some people find it more safe and more comforting to stay within the existing paradigm in which they came from. So they just reshift a little, re-identify themselves as something new. This is when people quickly go get a haircut, they go to get a makeover, they feel this sense of discomfort, and instead of allowing themselves go into it and fighting it, sometimes they reestablish themselves very quickly. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. I think for people who do that, part of their journey in this lifetime isn't necessarily to navigate down the spiritual rabbit hole. One of the common misconceptions that we have in the spiritual community is that everyone is here and meant to wake up. Everyone is meant to have a, a higher consciousness experience. Everyone is meant to become enlightened someday if they work hard enough or if they have some sort of grace happen to them. Everyone is meant to A, B, or C, or D, fill in the blank. I think those are interesting thoughts, and I think that I I actually really, really wish that would be the case. But at the same time, it comes back to we're here to learn and we're here to grow. And some of us chosen this path of the weird and wacky, wild um, slip this 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 sliding down into Alice in Wonderland, where we go into these new spaces of up deeper within ourselves. And some of us just want to stay on the surface. Some of us like that shallower end of the pool, and that's pretty much okay. So that's something before we go in here that I want to also make really clear that there is no judgment for people who are not going through this experience. It's not that you're better than them, or you're you're more awakened than them, or you're more woke. That's something that's raised placed out of human judgment. And I think that that's something that really needs to get clear. And please share that with other people along your journey because it just creates more separation and polarization and um, spiritual egotism, I say, of, oh, I'm more enlightened than this person. I'm more aware. I've been on the journey this long, or I see 11-11 this many times a day and you don't. You know, it's just, I hope that makes sense. It's just, (laughs) it's something that's... um, it just, it, I'd rather, rather us not have that in the world, um, but it's still going to be there anyway. So if you decide to take the, I was like the red pill and the blue pill in the matrix, right? If you decide to not re, reinvent yourself very quickly and to go deeper down the rabbit hole of spiritual awakening, this is where you start to find your teachers. You are immerse yourself in new podcasts, in books, in maybe a new community. You found a new YouTube channel that you love or a new 
um, movies or some sort of literature or resources that are providing you with a deep new understanding of this new world, this new identity in which you are, you are actually creating, you are manifesting, you are molding this new sense of self along your path. And this is something where people get really overwhelmed, but also in a good way. This is, I love this in when you are new to this experience and you feel a crystal for the first time and feel something coming off of it. And you're like so excited. You're like, what else is there? You're turning every, you want to turn every rock on this planet under and look at all the different particular, particular spiritual concepts that are out there. And I love this phase because it's, it's just so open. It's so curious it doesn't have any preconceived notions. There's no cynicism. There's no jadedness that happens, you know, to certain people as they go along their path sometime in their journey. Um, we go through different phases. So it's a really beautiful phase to be in. Wonderment, curiosity, and openness to all that you can learn. So pick up as many books as you can. You don't have to learn it all at once. When you're in that part of the phase, remember that it's not that you need to learn everything, that what you're supposed to learn will come to you when you're supposed to learn it. When you're ready, the, ready, the teacher will appear. And that's where you could go a whole two months, three months learning all about um, Reiki or learning about dream interpretation. And maybe you're going down the next rabbit hole of personal empowerment and now trying to better your health and how your diet relates to your spiritual process and your connection. So wherever you're at on your journey, go there, let it be. You don't have to get it all at once. Um, you're going to kind of figure out during this process what you what you want to focus on. So for me, I am a continuous learner. I have my main focus in my journey on personal empowerment for myself and learning to manage my energy field as a psychic medium. It's been a really big, long journey for myself, but for me, it's, it's fulfilling. I keep doing, being drawn back to more tools, more literature resources that can help with that focus. So that's where I'm focused. You might have gone through trauma in your life and you might use maybe meditation or mindfulness. Maybe you use supplements, crystals. Maybe you connect with um, a certain spiritual um, dogmatic philosophy or something that you really seem to find that helps you. And you always come back to that whole trauma piece of that's what I'm doing to help me continue to work through that process. Or if you went bankrupt or something with losing a job during that identity crisis, Sometimes it's looking at all the different ways you can learn to use the law of attraction or manifest your life to really learn a new way of, in, of engaging with finances and resources in a way that maybe is better for you. So that's really cool when people kind of find out what their um, just natural inclinations are during this phase. So I'd love to hear you guys, you know, share in the comments. I'll, I'll read them here in a little bit of what you found um, so far on your journey. And again, if you've been in this, doing this journey for a long time, I want to remind you that we're having another upgrade, I guess you could say. And really it's just, it, again, it goes back to the psychological piece of when you don't have an identity point and you don't know who you are, that's when we start letting our autopilot go. Our autopilot drop, it'd be in the driver's seat. And the autopilot is really, stripping away all identity and ego peace from ourselves so that more of our spirit, more of our truth is running the show. If, and I'm going to stress if, if fear is not in the way. Um, it, it's absolutely really, really true there. So once you really find out what you're really wanting to focus on, um, that's when you start to really join a group or you find a, something that you're focusing on for a good period of time and you dive really into that and find your people, your teachers, your gurus, whatever that is. And this is the stage where people can stay in for a long period of time. And I think sometimes for the rest of their lives, and there's no right or no wrong with that. Um, but I find that it, during this time in history, I think it is in, it's particularly important to allow people a new idea, a new concept, particularly, particularly in regards to finding your own truth, your own journey, and using the tools and the little breadcrumbs that have been put along your journey synchronistically, using them to find your way back home to you. 
what happens sometimes is we can absolutely go to a teacher or a, a guru or someone that is a prophet or they have, they're our healer, they're our psychic, they're our coach, they're whoever it is. And we can sometimes have them as a helper in our lives. And that is awesome. But then sometimes we get, we get, we have the, the I call it the Sagittarian view. Like you're the Sag, I have a lot of Sagittarius in my chart, um, astrologically speaking. But the, the concept of that is you find something new, you look under the rock. Oh, that was cool. You move on to the next thing. And that's you, you're, you're an, a never ending explorer. And that's great. Now, some people travel and they find something and it doesn't seem to be what they're looking for. They're finding, trying to find something to help something to heal, something to bring whatever it is they feel lacking into their life. And sometimes they can get jaded. Well, that teacher wasn't the person. Well, they only knew so much. And when you're first on the journey, it can be fine. But if you don't been doing it for years, you start to get really bogged down of, of constantly, and this is the mis misperception that happens, constantly trying to find the answers in someone else. And that's why we get, we would get frustrated if you're in that journey, that part of the journey, because I would urge you, if you've been a spiritual seeker for a very long time and you're starting to become jaded on the path, I would request to ask the question of what part of me is ready now to maybe find the answers within me. Now, if you're a spiritual seeker and you're perfectly content with that, and you're like, I've been seeking for 35 years, I'm perfectly okay with that. You may just be this beautiful Sagittarius type of person that just wants to learn and grow and learn and grow and you're curious and there's there's no wrong with that. But again, if you've gotten jaded with it, you've had expectations of someone or a particular philosophy or book or now crystals don't work, now this doesn't work, and you become upset with the spiritual community. That, times, that sometimes happens where um, even in any other religious faith um, that's not spiritually based because spirituality is based outside of religion, although you can have a religious dogma that you follow and also be spiritual, they're not separate things, but it can happen when you're you're in any religious dogma where you're just like, well, I, I, this, this isn't doing it for me. I need something else. And that's okay. I wish for everyone to always find the answers they're looking for, but I think I have a secret. All the answers that we're looking for are from within ourselves. They're always within ourselves. And I think that externally seeking them is part of the process. If we're a seeker, it's part of our always process because we just love to learn. But there comes a stage in the spiritual awakening process where you become the master for yourself where you are seeking for yourself. You still have people that you go to to help you. You still have counsel. You still have community and people that you learn from other people. You're not always going to be the 100% source of information. Um, my my, my um, journey has really gotten me to a point for my own particular life is that any answers I seek are here right now in front of me always, all the answers I need are always here. Now, it may not come from me. If I have a question and I ask, and I may not get a direct clear cognizant, clairvoyant, clear sentient, clear tangent, clear ambient, all the different types of intu intuitive hits where I could hear it or get a vision, that doesn't always come from my direct channel. Sometimes the information comes from a bird floating on the window and waving at me and looking at me in a certain way, or it comes from a perfect stranger that comes up and says, you know, a certain thing, or it comes from being in the grocery store and a particular song is playing and there's a lyric or a line that answers the question that you've been asking. Now, this is also things that continue, will continue to happen to you during the awakening stage when you're experiencing the synchronicities and all that. But I think it's really important to really allow yourself to go in that space where you are the person that's going to be giving um, yourself the permission, permission to be your own guru. Now, the reason why I find that to be very important right now, especially in this part of the awakening process on the planet and I will call it an awakening process. Really, you could you could flip the script. We could say, actually, it's a, you know, you could go really pessimistic and negative and say, well, actually, it's this process. Everyone's going through some sort of weird crisis because of the, the, the pandemic, which is true. But during the 
the chaos. Chaos really breeds a lot of creativity. That's where creativity comes from chaos. So during the chaotic times, we have so much opportunity to harness the energy of chaos to create, to create something new for our lives. Because when we have our day-to-day -day lives where there's not chaos, where there's rhythm, there's everything's the same, right? There's not a lot of room there to grow. There's not a lot of room there to try new things. Sometimes we get stuck in these patterns and this rigidity. But when there's chaos, we're like, well, I give up. You know, I, I don't ever usually go to the park on Tuesdays, but I'm going to go there any, anyway. I don't have to plan it out exactly. And that's kind of how it's been with the pandemic because things have shifted so much and changed and it's up and down. So it really allows a little bit for some of us allows us to have more exploration of the chaotic nature of, of the universe during this time and what it can do to create things for us. And I bet some of you out there have experienced just during this time where there is circumstances that you wouldn't normally go to this place or that place, that due to you doing that and making that choice, you met someone or you experienced something that you would not have experienced if you were in your regular rhythms before the pandemic. So that's why, again, this collective global awakening, this consciousness rising that we have on the planet, having on the planet. Now, again, I think it's important to remember, too, that um, during this process, some people choose to, you know, there's that red pill or blue pill in the, in the matrix. You take one or the other, you know, and there's no good or there's no bad. I, I really, really, really don't like the polarization. That's my own personal opinion of saying that, you know, someone's choosing to stay asleep or they're not woke. It creates more it's not loving. It's just not loving. And I think that if you can look at with compassion with the world, that what happens in the brain when we are overwhelmed and there's a lot of change and there's a lot of upheaval is that we go through a collective trauma. So trauma isn't just having, um, you know, sexual abuse or being beaten or being, you know, having death threats. There is just the trauma of life and the trauma of change and the things that we're going through. It's very different. Trauma is very different for different people, but different parts of the brain start to start to shut down. Um, three parts of the brain. We have the uh, stem brain, the reptilian brain, which is where our reactivity comes from and where just our natural primal instincts come from to just react and jump on someone. And that's actually the part of the brain um, that's really the most active right now. We're in this fight or flight response. Then we have the limbic brain, which is our social brain. We're connecting, we're in our emotional brain. And then we have the neocortex, which is the one you say to your teenager that, yeah, your frontal lobe is not developed, sir, because you're making some pretty bad choices. Well, what happens when we go through a collective trauma, like we are right now on the planet, is again, you have the choice, you have this red pill, blue pill moment where you could, you kind of start having this like, oh my gosh, all my identity, my control, who am I, what am I doing, what's happening? It makes you go down the path where you're having synchronicities, you kind of just let things go and you're just going with it and you don't know what to expect and that's when you're open. But then the other part of it is you shut down. So I want people to remember right now that on the planet, people are going through some much of a shutting down process and that's okay. Um, and that's really when the frontal lobe is not in it's not active. That's why you might have people that you um, love that are making decisions that you don't agree with. And you say, they're a smart person. Why are they deciding this? Does it make any sense? It actually does make sense because if you're in such stress, um, the parts of the brain that really are connected to each other to really connect the pieces of what's going on, what is um, not based out of just survival, that kind of thing, what's based, best based for a group of people versus just, you know, each to each his own. Um, that doesn't make sense to someone who's in that space. And every one of us on this planet has that hardware. Our brains all operate that same way. And we all could be in that position where we are choosing to um, do something that's maybe more behavior um, based out of reactivity and could maybe harm people unintentionally, say things we don't necessarily want to say. And I know you probably had that happen to you. You know, it's happened to myself. It's it's something that we've, we've been watching and observing in the world. But this is where we can use the metacognition, which is thinking about our own thoughts and being aware of ourselves on a deeper level through a spiritual awakening process. The deeper we go and the more connected we become with our own selves, the more connected we become with our unconscious, with our subconscious, with our intuition. That's where it comes from. Because that's why when we get dreams that are premonition dreams or a dream of someone who has passed or crossed over a loved one, that's the most common scenarios people experience, intuition. It's because we're tapped into our intuition and our subconscious during dream state. 
the cool thing about a spiritual awakening process is you're starting to tap into that process during your waking waking state because your part the hemispheres of the brain and just the overall brain how it's processing and communicating is connecting in on a deeper level and that's just the hardware there's a lot of as an energy intuitive and and seeing energy around people i see a lot of stuff going on outside of it it's like it's kind of like we are the hardware um connecting to the, the spiritual universal Wi-Fi. And the universal Wi-Fi is the information about our soul's purpose. It is the information about all the things that are happening in the world. And that's how connecting in psychically for people who are psychic professionals, that's how they do it. So it's really, really cool when you start to become more aware of that. And if you're becoming more highly sensitive, you consider yourself an empath, if you're someone that's really, really oversensitized to that, that's part of the spiritual awakening process. You're learning to now navigate a world that's no longer black and white, that's no longer just physical third dimensional space. It is a world of energy, vibration, frequency, feelings, sounds, lights, senses beyond the five that can become overwhelming until you learn to manage it. But that's why I'm here. You know, I have I have different levels and layers of I call it the spiritual onion. You know, you're kind of peeling off these layers of your own spiritual awakening and things you need to let go of. Um, and there's different phases of that of learning to navigate. So if you are choosing the stage of becoming your own master, it doesn't mean that you are going to have all your answers on yourself by, by yourself. Again, I'm going to just re, re back, re, circle back to that. But it's going to allow you to look at where your life is not in alignment with your authentic self and who you are becoming or who you are now. It's going to allow you to really make choices that are based on your self beyond the program you had from your parents or people at school that bullied you or an experience that you had growing up that was challenging or what the world says you should be or do or how much money you should make. All those programs are what people would, I, I label them as the matrix. If you Again, if you watch the movie, I've met people recently that haven't seen that movie. And I just tell you, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. You're really missing out on like some really important connecting pieces here. Um, I think that are really important to understand. But I think that during this time, I encourage people to whatever you phase you're on your spiritual journey, find someone who is, if you're in the space where you are really diving down the rabbit hole and learning so much more information, you're looking for teachers, find a teacher, find a teacher, but also know that during that phase of the spiritual awakening process, you will also have the task of learning something I call discernment. It's a very important part of the phase, of that phase, because you will run into teachers, books, people, things that maybe aren't the most in the most highest integrity, people who aren't, do not have your best interest at hand or in their mind, I guess you should say. And uh, that's one of my things for my journey. Uh, I think I spent 10 years of my life feeling so upset and so wounded from my own journey where I had experienced charlatan psychic professionals, people who helped me but didn't have, who I was allowing help me but didn't have my best interest, who were more kind of abusive. They had a lot of power issues. Um, but at the same time, I understand now in my journey that we all go through these experiences of attracting people into our life to teach us how to have our own empowerment, to learn discernment. And having empowerment and trust in yourself and your own messages that you get, really, you can't really start to trust yourself until you learn discernment. You learn to discern what the difference is between someone who has your best interest in and feeling out versus the naivety and that comes with just open curiosity. Because when we're naive and we're open, we can, of course, be like little children and have no idea what we're walking into. And so I usually ask people when you are seeking a spiritual teacher, ask your inner guides yourself. If you're not feeling like, I don't know, I'm not intuitive, I, I'm getting stuff, but it's not, it's not fully 100%. I would say the best thing is to really just tune into your physical gut. That's really the biggest, most strongest powerhouse, no matter what uh, psychic sensitivity you say you might have, or if you don't feel like you're having dreams or anything like that, I don't care who you are. If you don't even believe in that stuff, the physical gut 
has the most nerve endings in the body. The solar plexus and the stomach area has the most physiological nerve endings in the entire body. That's why every single one of us on this planet, when we have met someone that we don't like, feel something weird in our stomach. Or if we've had a power struggle with an authority figure that doesn't feel right, or you're nervous to meet your dad or mom and you're in trouble, like you feel it in your stomach, you're getting not just, there's it's an animalistic sense that we have naturally, but also when you meet someone for the first time or you have a feeling of someone, we have the most nerve endings really active there. So I would just say, if you're not trusting that yet, is this person that's the teacher for me? Is this the book for me? Is this the path for me? It's in my highest and best for me. Sit there and feel your stomach. Maybe eat a meal or drink a cup of tea or something and just wait till you're done eating and, and see how it sits. How does it sit? Trust the physical part of your body because until you learn to navigate the world of energy and the non-physical world, go with the physiological third dimensional part that you've been in your whole life. You may be very aware of your body most of your life and now are kind of tapping out of that and tapping into more senses that are beyond that. So I'd say go with the thing you've already know, learned how to drive, your body. Your body knows best. So trust that first before you go go and really connecting with the spiritual teacher, just so you can um, learn that discernment lesson a little bit quicker. You may make mistakes first off, but it's really important right now because any time in the world history, when we've had a pandemic, when we've had a chaotic global event, that is the time when the seedy underbelly of the spiritual community, of the psychic community, of the charlatans, of the individuals who are selling you snake oil, it's not just in the spiritual community, but it's also in the world of supplements. And anyone who wants to make a buck can sell you something that might give you a sense of safety and security during this time of fear. So this is the time where we can be easily manipulated. And that's why I feel very strongly about getting past that third step of trusting, you know, getting your teachers, people you can really trust to teach you and navigate along the way. And a really good teacher will help you to help yourself. A good teacher, you, um, a good teacher, you will have a sense that they want you to empower yourself so that they're not, that you don't need them in the future. My job on this planet is to work myself out of a job. I want to create a space where all the people that come to me can become their own mediums and connect their own self to the other side, not just to spiritual in that sense, but just their intuition in general. So it's not just mediumship so that I don't have to help people in that sense. My job is to help those people connect. So, cause not everyone connects and learns this to do it professionally. That's another thing to remember. A lot of people really have their spiritual awakening and go, oh my gosh, I should be a Reiki healer or oh my gosh, I should be a professional psychic and start doing tarot readings. And you can do that and do it on the side. There's nothing wrong with that, but everybody can learn to play the piano, but not everyone becomes a great musician. Everybody can learn how to maybe do construction, but not everyone really enjoys building houses. It's really a really important thing that I think not everyone thinks about. Now, I don't want to, anyone out there is like, oh my God, I was just starting my own business as a Reiki healer or whatever. Don't like get discouraged by what I'm saying. Go back to what does your body say? What does your spirit say? What are you supposed to do? What's your purpose on the planet right now? But I think it's really, really good to really bring the power back to ourselves. We've had so much misuse and abuse of power in our whole entire world for the last how long in history. And this is the time now that we get to take our power back. Now, power doesn't look like this masculine, overprotective or over rigid or over um, power over somebody. There's different types of power. And the type of power I'm talking about is this sense of knowing within yourself, a centeredness, a compassion, a person who has integrity in themselves but also the ability to have boundaries, loving yet firm boundaries when they need to with others. That power is soft. It's not hard, but that softness is strong. That softness can even be stronger than this push, 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 go, 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 fight, 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 win, 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 overcome. This is our culture, right? This is the program, our culture, that to be this, you need to be better, you need to be the best, you need to achieve, you need to up level, you need to climb the mountain. All those things are fight, fight, fight. That's not what we're doing anymore. You can choose that if you want to. I, I think that game's old. So um, 
you can always join the new game. It's, it's, it's a new ease. Life can be easy. Life can be fun, even during a pandemic. It's really, really about moving through who you have been to who you are becoming and having a world of um, connecting with people and a surrounding yourself with like-minded individuals um, to help you through that process. Um, because once you can get solidified in who you are and be your own guru, then it doesn't matter who you're around. You don't have to tightly, rigidly put yourself in a specific group so that you are around an echo chamber of other people that believe what you believe. You're able to be confident enough to step outside of your particular belief system and talk to people and spirits and people all over the world that have different belief systems, that have different political beliefs, different beliefs about what's happening on the, on the world right now in the pandemic. And because you're coming from a secure base of who you are, a secure identity point, and I know and trust myself, I trust my higher self, I trust my connection, you don't need to change those people or be evangelical about they're wrong. They need to change how they see things. You're able to come to them from a space of this power, this type of power was saying integrity, softness, love, compassion, confidence. That's what the world is ready for. And that's what I'm here to do right now for my own life, my own journey, but also to work, walk along other people who are stepping into that. People who are stepping into that journey, I call them light leaders. So if you are a light leader on the planet right now, you are someone that is ready to lead yourself and trust the signs and messages you get from all, all others, all others. Um, looking at your own shadow, the parts of yourself that you maybe are scared of, the parts of yourself that choose decisions, maybe compulsively, that aren't out of love, that are actually out of self-degradation or hurting yourself. Watching that part of yourself and saying, no, I'm not going to make that decision to eat that food right now. I'm not going to make that decision to say no or, or to say yes to something I want to say no to. So it's a really, the light leaders are here to um, lead, lead the new way of of loving the world through compassion and allowance and neutrality, not separation, evangelical fighting what's right or wrong. But at the same time, have complete allowance of those who are in that space of polarization and fighting because they still have a purpose. That's their purpose for their lives right now, to fight, to stand up, to speak out, whatever it is. That's bringing them a sense of empowerment, a sense of contrast from maybe the old self that they were and really helping them fulfill a part of what they want to be and who they want to express. And it's not for us to judge what's right or wrong for them, but the allowance is a lot more powerful. And it really does, um, if, you, if you think about it right now, there's so much noise in the world, so much chaotic noise that it's become so common that the only thing that's going to stand out now in that noise will be stillness, softness, compassion, you know, you'll be walking along and everything's, and all of a sudden there's a clearing. There's a person just sitting there completely kind and peaceful. And it's such a contrast from what you're used to seeing that there's something about that person that's a breath of fresh air. And the more we see that, the more we be that for ourselves, the more we will become a light into the world to help shift the world into a space in which it's really looking at to balance things out. It's not that they think that the world doesn't need to be chaotic right now. That's perfectly okay. But the world is a, uh, the universe is a correcting mechanism where it always seeks balance. So you could go through a period, um, the age of enlightenment, where everyone was enlightened, everyone was happy and peaceful and loving and all that. But that's that gets to a point where it gets boring, like that movie Pleasantville. <laughs> Again, I'm moving these movie references, but people get bored with that. Then someone wants to come in, the um, the Loki or the chaos, you know, person wants to come in and make some sort of, you know, he wants to shake things up a little. It's boring here. You know, that's really the higher perspective, the zoomed out perspective of this world, because we see it from such a uh, grounded human perspective of our lives because we're so attached to our house, our children, our spouse, you know, little things like maybe our spouse is cheating on us. Like those subjective things that we're going through are absolutely valid for our human experience. But we always forget that our universe is so big and that we are so tiny and that this, there's so much more that's happening. And I think it's really interesting to just shift that perspective sometimes and remember. So after you have kind of gone through all those things, I think the last stage is just mastery. Really allowing yourself to be in a space of who you are and continue to grow and know that um, you'll always be shifting and changing. Uh, I think they say before enlightenment, carry water, after enlightenment, enlightenment, carry water. It's the same thing. So if you are seeing 1111, 
And you are experiencing not just 1111, but a lot of different numbers that are repeating, synchronicities, meeting people. I would just say, go along for that ride and allow it. Don't pull for it. Don't look for it. Don't worry it's going to go away. Because when you do, when you worry, you shift your space, you shift your perspective into expectation. And remember that the identity point in which you had come from and which you are trying to let go of will re- tries to re-solidify as something new. And then you have an expectation of what the world looks like, how your schedule is, how things are supposed to be. And you're less open to just being in the present moment without expect, expecting what the, next, what the next moment's going to offer. And when you're in that space of openness and presence, that's when the synchronicities happen. For myself as an intuitive, I cannot get any information and cannot do a good reading or a good energy session for someone and really tap in if I'm not fully present. That's why if any time in my life, part of my integrity as a professional is if I have specifically something, I have a 14 year old, something happens with him or my family, and it's something that's very stressful. As a human, I go through those things too, right? That's when I say, you know what? I have to reschedule my clients. It doesn't happen as often anymore for myself, but it's one of those things If I know I'm not going to be able to remain present. I'm not going to get clear information from the universe, clear symbols, clear images, whatever it is. And it goes the same thing for you. Even if you're not doing psychic work professionally, you are still intuitive. You are still psychic. Everyone is. Everyone is. And those who think they are not are just kidding themselves. And they're actually creating an expectation that they are not. And when you open up to that, again, you're in that present space. That's when you're allowing information to flow. You're noticing the subtleties in your environment. Noticing, just being. And that's when things can jump out at you. Can the softness can allow maybe a louder sense of softness to boop at you. Hey, look at this billboard. Hey, this song's playing, but this phrase of the song is just louder than it was. That's interesting. I noticed that. So I think that those are just experiences that we have along our journey. Now, I will speak to one more thing about the last week. Um, this last two years, but this last week has been a quickening. So I used to work at a chiropractor and we'd see about 200 patients a day. And one of the things I really found fascinating about it as an energy intuitive is being able to see the energy around people and seeing how everyone kind of gets in the same vibe. They get in the same space. So one day they'd be like, oh man, I'm so tired today. Everyone's tired that day. Okay. Maybe it's the weather, but it's a sunny day. It's not dreary out. Why is everyone tired today? Something's going on in the energy of the collective. As a sensitive, I interpret and feel the energy. I'm kind of like the cosmic weather is is something that's knocking at my door every day. So that includes the astrology, that includes solar flares, that includes any storms, that includes weather on the planet. That also includes the energy of the collective. If we're feeling sad or feeling something that's disturbing, it's going to ripple out. Just like when 9-11 happened, there was a lot of just purging and emotions. Just when we had everything happen with last year, with all the stuff happening with upheaval, there's, and just even now too, when there's something that shifts and changes, when you have a group of people that are feeling a certain way, it ripples out. I mean, think about it. If you're in your own family and your, your partner or your spouse or your child is having a a freak out, everyone in the house is going to feel it. (laughs) If, especially if you're intuitively sensitive or empathically insensitive. So even if your, your kid's done getting, having their temper tantrum and they're upset, you know, the air is still going to feel it, you know, walking into a space, you know, when we do house clearings for people, you know, for businesses and stuff like that, we go in and we sense what's going on in there. What needs to shift? What needs to change here? That's blocking flow, blocking energy, blocking relationships, or just stagnant, or just there's fighting in here. This is, of course, this energy, you're sitting in this energy. Of course, you're going to start getting sick over time and feeling depressed. So think about that. That's just your home and one physical space. And you've all noticed that, I'm sure, maybe just not have been aware of it. If you walk into somebody's home or a space, there's a sense of what has what the space feels like. Um, and as you're on your spiritual awakening process, you can feel that in a deeper way. But think about that and let's just zoom it out to the whole entire world. This is just one household feeling something. So again, people's energy and the collective's energy of what they're feeling is part of the cosmic energy. So again, solar flares, moon phases, astrology phases, um, how the collective's feeling, um, this uh, Schumann resonance, and then weather patterns. So all those things. And of course, the ley lines, the shifts in the planet and what the planet's giving off. So it's fascinating, especially when you're stepping into this world after your spiritual awakening of energy. And that's where energy awareness comes in because that first stage is like, oh my gosh, I'm feeling everyone else's energy, you know, and how do I manage that? 
but you don't even think about, am I feeling the energy of the planet, the sun, this, this space? Is there, you know, all these other things going on? So it's kind of a little bit overwhelming sometimes if you don't learn to navigate it. But 1111 is um, the number that most people see when they're waking up. And I love this because I know my mother, she's not really in the spiritual community, but she has an alternative group in her her um, local UCC church. She goes to a United church, church of Christ. And I know that they are, I think her or there was another group she's involved in that's talking about um, the 1111. And they've been talking about it for the last 10 years. And there are people that write about it. And there are Christians that talk about it too. And there are individuals who are Buddhists that talk about it. It's something that I find very fascinating because it's not just one particular religion that is experiencing it. So I think when someone usually asks me, what does 1111 mean? Go back to what I said earlier about you're your own guru, because someone out there might tell you, this is what it means, exactly this, this, and this. And at first, maybe that makes sense for you and that will be the case. And you might have someone who's a channeler and says, this is what the spirits tell me or whatever. You know, I just think that because individually we have such a unique experience and then we're so different, just like a Tylenol doesn't fix everyone's headache. Maybe it goes away, but maybe your headache's from another issue that's actually happening that's causing the headache. Since everyone's so unique and individual, just as we are in our bodies, we are in our spirits, not one size fits all is going to happen for numerology, but there is a general experience of that. So I always tell people when they're learning intuitive information, if you pick up a dream dictionary or you pick up anything that is a book of symbols of what things mean, they're going to be generalized. And a lot of people who are energy sensitive, um, if we would all kind of agree upon what we're sensing from a particular um Thing, we would probably agree upon the general idea because you have to remember that energy doesn't have language. So when you have to interpret things just from even language to language, from Spanish to English to French, interpretation, things can get lost in that interpretation. So remember, we're all trying to take this concept of energy, this knowing, these feelings, this beyond the five senses and limit it down to just a couple words of the general idea and consensus of what things mean. So I'm going to read through. This is funny. I wonder when we did this. There's no date on this, but Matt and I did a Friday night forum on 11-11 back, like I think around 2012, 2011, something like that. And I have this little card I pulled out because I was like, all right, last minute, you know, you guys need me to be on here since Candy can't be here. Um, and I pulled out to share our generalizations of the numerology and what the numbers mean. And there are some amazing books on this at New Visions. If you want to pick up a book on numerology, if you are seeing repeating numbers, if you are seeing particular animals, and again, you're in that phase where you're learning, one of those books is very, very helpful. A dream dictionary or a symbol dictionary, all of those are really, really amazing resources to have if you're at that part of the journey. Because you can learn so much about the generalization of what they mean and then make it work for you. It may not be exactly, but it might give you an idea. It might give you an aha moment and go, oh, okay, I know what that means for me according to my own journey. That makes sense. So from zero to nine, I'm going to share just in general what these mean. And I don't, I'm thinking I'm going to, I don't know if I, you guys can even see it. Uh, let's see. This is my little, yes, I can hold it up while I talk about it so you have a visual. Okay. So 1111, awakening to inner oneness. Let me see if I can get this straight. This was our Friday night forum from so long ago. It's 1111 in general. Let's go about that one first at the very bottom. So 1111 is really when people are in, in synchronicity. Uh, a lot of times when people are going through their spiritual awakening, they experience it. Oneness because they're all ones. Um, and a lot of times I've heard people say that they experience it as two pillars. If, if they're walking through um, into a different dimensional space, if you want to call it that or relate it to that. Um, but for me, I think it's all about people are saying now 1111, make a wish. And I find that interesting because 1111 is really about awakening you to yourself and to knowing yourself and reminding you and showing you that you are the creator of your life, that you are on the right path. 1111 is just one of those spiritual breadcrumbs to remind you that right now, where your energy's at, how you're thinking, how you're eating, how you're sleeping, whatever you're doing, pay attention because on this trajectory right now, where you're at, 
that's helping you. So it may change the next day, but as long as you can kind of listen and see what keeps me in this flow of synchronicity. Usually it comes down to love and acceptance, but sometimes we fall out of them. We don't see the awakening patterns anymore. We don't see 1111. We don't continue to experience it. But when we're continuing to experience it, we're in the flow. And I think that that's the biggest thing I would say takeaway just with 1111. So going to zero, this is really the source. This is manifestation. This is the beginning. So if you're seeing a lot of zeros everywhere, you know, look at where in your life are you beginning something? Are you starting? Um, one is leadership and beginnings. Um, two is balance. So partnership. I have, I have to put my arm down. My arm's like, oh, this is like isometric holds. Whew. If I had a little, I'll, pull, I'll hold it up in a second. Um, so two is balance and partnerships. So you know, if you are looking for a relationship or a partnership or a business connection and you keep seeing twos and maybe before you meet a particular person or if you're seeing it in a dream, that might be significant. Twos are balanced. You know, it's like two is a balanced number. And usually even in feng shui, if you're looking to attract a partner in your life, have things in your home in pairs. So that includes, you know, if you have a candle set, don't have three or four candles, have two. Um, have two things next, you know, two um, nightstands, one on so each side of the bed. So two is a number of partnership and balance. Three is mind, body, and spirit. So that is really the Trinity. Three is really significant in just history, history for um, a lot of different, different religions. But I think Ascended Masters is one of the things that people usually talk about when they see threes. Um, for me, that's, that's pretty significant. I'd say that's pretty right on for my subjective experience as an intuitive. Whenever I'm seeing threes, it's really giving me information to tap into some of the information from the teachers who have come before me. So if you're seeing a lot of threes, I would suggest you to tap into what one of the ascended masters taught. And people are like, if, if you're out there going, what the heck is an ascended master? Think about all the teachers on the planet that have had historical record of them being here, or not even a historical record, but the myth mythology of what they've come to teach and pick up one of their books. Uh, Siddhartha, Buddha, um, the Buddha Maitreya, Jesus Christ. Um, I think... Um, some people say Disney. I don't know. I don't know about that. Um, but I think the Ascended Masters are really people who here have made a really great contributions. Um, even sometimes saints, people who have uh, crossed over, who we have more recent record of, um, those are Ascended Masters. I think there's a lot of really good books. I don't have it in here with me now, do I? There's this book I read about 10 years ago that kind of popped off the shelf at me again. That's another experience. You might have books just jump off the shelf at you. Um, sometimes literally, actually, too. But um, there's a book called The Seven Sacred Flames. It's a channeled book by Arlia Jones, I believe. I think that was her name. Um, but that's a really good book that connects with Ascended Masters. I know you can get that at New Visions Books and Gifts, and that that, that is also there. Fours. So i got to ask you guys, what do you think four means? So think about four legs on a table. Create a really solid structure and a foundation. Four in a square, so a sacred geometry, a cube has has these four different points that make it this 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 square. Um, it's basically a square in three dimensional space, so it's very solid and it doesn't it's not easy to roll around like a sphere. So it it's really uh, good for structure, and it's good for for phys physical manifestation in the sense that um, it's there to support. So angels and spirit guides are usually representative of the number four because they're there for support uh, on a spiritual level. And then fours can also represent work. Five is a number that I would be curious. And in the comments, because I'm going to get to the comments, in the comments, please share with me if you are seeing particular reoccurring numbers. Because I'd love for you to share with anyone else who's on listening. You know, let's create a community out of this. You know, if you're experiencing this stuff, there's places for you to go. And I can send suggest suggestions here and in, in post and send some um, links for you guys to all to go to. But I think it's important to have a community right now of who are also experiencing these things. And um, I'd love to see what you guys are experiencing, what numbers significantly. But fives. I would not be uh, surprised if a lot of you are not experiencing consistent reoccurring fives. Five is transformation. Think about it. The number from zero to 10, it's one to 10. It's halfway in between. So that's that point where things trans transform. It's that change factor. And we're really going through a lot of that right now. Six is refocusing connections and looking at your connecting 
to the higher self versus the physical self. Whenever I get sixes, again, the sixes represent the material world. So whenever I get sixes, it's really helpful for me to look at my finances and resources, pay attention to my spending, look at my time management, look at all things in the physical. And also it can be um, a sign if you are overly worried about finances or resources or survival um, to really reconnect back spiritually if you're getting too materially, physically focused. Seven is about creativity spiritual connection and luck and prayers. So seven heaven, you know, that's significant for a lot of reason. Um, there's, there's a lot of numbers connected to seven, the seven chakra system, seven days of the week. There's a lot of sevens, seven archangels. There's a lot of sevens. Law of attraction is number eight. Um, it's abundance and karmic cycles. So I have a, on 11, 11, 20, actually November 11th, 2011 is when I got this tattoo. It's actually a, a figure eight. So it is, um, it's an, it's an, it's an affinity symbol. So, you know, that's what the universe is. It's infinitely creating, destroying, creating, destroying. It's this, this nat nature, natural law of, of, of attraction. So we attract things, we create things, and then they leave our life, you know, they destroy that. That's how life is We're we're created. And then we, of course we die and we, we cycle back. So, um, karmic cycles. So it's cycles. Um, it also represents abundance because the universe is abundant. It's overflowing with abundance. It's all about not getting into a lack attack, as I call it, and re redirecting your energy to focus on that abundance. So if you're seeing a lot of eights, just maybe it's looking about shifting perspective and looking at what is abundant for you, looking at maybe you are about to manifest something if you've been worried about it, or um, maybe you're going into a new cycle. And the nine is this, the finish line. It's really endings. It's letting go. So this is another one. If you're not seeing fives, I would say you're seeing nines because nine is this, this need to just let go of the old. It's time. You have to let go of things before it can, you know, nothing, something can be rebirthed. So yeah. But anyhow, that was our original forum. I'm so glad I had this, um, this little card because I thought, oh my gosh, it'd be really fun to share just what we had written down. So I remember we wrote down here, I'm going to write, I'm going to read these two quotes that we wrote down here from 10, 10, 10 years ago. My gosh, it's so long ago now. So Matt wrote, inner oneness is equivalent with total consciousness and responsibility for your choices in both the internal and external world. So when we define what inner oneness is, this process that you're attempting to get to after your spiritual awakening, it's really total consciousness and responsibility for your choices inside and out. That's that total consciousness of being aware. Why am I making this decision? Okay. Am I making this decision out of a wound, out of something that happened to me in the past? Okay. If I have, then I'm going to take responsibility for that. Even if you made a decision out of a wound, it's not about, oh my gosh, I need to get better. I need to finish. There's a finish line mentality to the spiritual awakening. Like I'm going to get to the end. It's a journey, not a destination. And I think that if you remember that, you know, right now I, you know, maybe had an outburst with my child and I did this because A, B, or C, if you can be aware in that moment and take responsibility for that, that is that inner oneness. You're living in it now. You can live in it now. It's not some um, mythological, magical, mystical, mystical thing that's not going to happen for you. It can happen for you right now. It's just about being conscious and aware in every moment as much as you can. And it's a lot of responsibility to be conscious. Sometimes it's easier to just go and, you know, drink a bunch of beer or, you know, eat some junk food and just space out and not be aware. You know, that's, that's sometimes what we need to do sometimes too, when we get overwhelmed with life. And then I wrote down, I haven't read this in like 10 years, so it's kind of interesting. The journey to oneness begins with a single shift in consciousness. That is very true. Thank you for my old, um, former wise self. So, um, yes, it's totally true. It's so, so true. You know, that journey really is just one single shift, one single shift in your identity point and everything in your life can completely change. <sighs> so yeah, we're going through this big, big uh, process and I, I really thank you guys for joining me. I want to ask you guys, and how funny is it? We have 11, exactly 11 comments right now, 11, 11. So anyway, I want to see if you guys have any, um, comments, questions, all those things. Hey, Modi. Hey, Janet. Roger. Hi, Rachel. Hello, Jordan. Jordan, Jordan. It's hello. 444 for Janet. So, and Jordan seeing nines. Yeah. Letting go, letting go, letting go. And actually, Jordan's always in a space of letting go. So I would not be surprised why you always see that. 
That's always what you're doing. Every time I see you, love you, love you, love you. Yes. Any questions? Anyone has any questions? I know that the, um, the stream from what I'm streaming is like maybe 30 seconds to a minute behind. So what I'm saying to you right now may take 30 seconds or a minute to get to you. So I'm going to just continue to talk here. So you guys have time to chat um, and, and share or ask questions in the box there. And uh, yeah, I want to, I want to see what you guys are experiencing. If not, I'm so glad you guys joined and uh, stuck with me through this uh, last minute, not prepared at all, Friday night forum. <laughs> I will, I will um, give you guys a couple more minutes here to share in the chat and um, ask some questions, but I'm going to, of course, do the thing that I have to do to remind everybody who is not aware. The difference between New Visions books and gifts and Firefly Hollow. So important because so many people get this confused. New Visions books and gifts is an amazing metaphysical bookstore. We have gifts, crystals, jewelry, candles, incense, statuary, and all the all that. So if you have not been there, you are missing out. They're in the Eastern Boulevard Shopping Center, Kingston Square Shopping Center. So in East York, newvisionsbooksandgifts.com. So check that out. Um, then Firefly Hollow is located in South York. We are the healing center, the place for workshops, events, and we have massage, acupuncture, energy medicine, readings, nutrition, gatherings, and all that. Our next gathering coming up is a women's circle that we have the first Thursdays in the month. It's called Daughters of the Hollow. So that has a couple spaces left. If you really need some space with other very aware, conscious people that are looking to connect and really looking to share your awakening journey with, I highly suggest joining that event. Um, we have a spoon bending class coming up. I get, I think, I think that's still on. Um, and some other great things you can check out at Firefly. Bob didn't have any announcements for tonight. Anything you know, specials or anything that was going on? I do say that next month that we are looking to have Miss Lana Riders joining us. She is the local sound healer from Soundwise Health Professionals in Lancaster County. So we'll have her. We're really hoping to have it in person. I don't know if that will happen, um, but we will have her either way. And then October, we'll be having Ricky Friedman and we'll be chatting about Reiki. we will having a heart to heart discussion about Reiki and Reiki healing. And she's an amazing, fabulous practitioner who has her own Reiki healing practice in Harrisburg. So she would be a really awesome guest so we can talk with her. So back to the questions. Oh, thank you, Rachel. So Rachel says she's hoping to see a larger community tribe coming together. Yes, 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 Rachel. So everybody's finding their people and you also may be shifting people. You know, sometimes you get involved with a group of people and then they shift over time. And that's really important too. Sometimes you have lifelong friends and sometimes people move in different directions. And that's part of life in general that some people get stuck in where they're, they're maybe not learning as much or growing or the contrast in the relationship isn't serving their journey anymore. And so if you are um, looking for a tribe, um, there is a larger community coming together. There has been, I'm not sure, Rachel, if you, um, oh, gosh, it's hard because we haven't had um, the Holistic Expo for a couple years now, but that's our big event here in New York and we love it. We are really looking forward to having it back next year. And I'm hoping that you attended that because I'm not sure if I've uh, met you in person, but um, I look forward to if I have not. And that is the Holistic Expo at the York Fairgrounds. And we have over a hundred vendors and we have just a really, really big event that really brings people together. But on a local level, we're looking for a smaller group setting. Absolutely, there's so many events happening in York and not as much now, but I would definitely check out um, Firefly Hollow Wellness and New Visions uh, if you have not come in there. And even just coming in to hang out, there's a lot of people that come in to hang out and see Matt and chat with him and meet other people in the store. So that's really common to happen. Um, so the final thing, if you guys have any other questions, I still will just share the last thing that I need to remind everyone. I always forget this. I'll put up the image for you guys. If I have it. It's about it's about donations. We do take $5 donations for the events for Friday Night Forums. We always took them in person when we had our Friday Night Forum Forums in person. Um, but I know right now we are actually doing that through PayPal. So 
please know that anything you donate, even if you're not watching this live and you're watching the replay of this and this has helped you at any time, if you donate whatever you can, even if it's a dollar or five dollars, that really helps our community right now. It helps our community in need. We're almost at the $3,000 mark, I believe it is. And once we get to that um, mark, we're actually going to be launching a scholarship fund with that money. So that money will get back circulated out to the public so that anyone who needs services or workshops or anything for their own healing and their journey right now will have access to a scholarship and they can really apply for that. So all you guys can easily donate via PayPal. Just go to your PayPal and donate to um, Firefly Hollow Wellness. You can just type in the email address, send money to fireflyhollowwellness at gmail.com, or you can follow the link paypal.me slash donate. And I will share that in the uh, chat so it's a little bit easier, easier to click a link. I think you can do that. paypal.me slash donates FFH. So we really appreciate that if you guys do that. That's always great. All right. Thank you guys so much. I will continue to attempt to ask your questions in the chat afterwards. Um, but we hope you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And again, if you're having your awakening experience, it, just know that you're not alone in it. And we honor you and we're here. All of us are walking each other home. Thank you again. Bye.